So in my last video, I talked about my very first console, the PlayStation 2, and some of my favorite memories with that console. This time, I'm going to talk about my very first handheld. But before I talk about myself, I asked you guys what your first handheld system was, and most of you said it was the Game Boy Advance. Dr. Daniel316 remembers it being passed down to him by his brother when he was around 4 years old in 2007, and he loved it. So many fond memories playing Pokemon and many other games. He says what he loved the most about the Game Boy Advance was the backwards compatibility with the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color, which greatly increased the library of games at your disposal and really made it such an easy purchase. And he also loved how simple games could be, or how some games tried to be complex and push the hardware and ended up being something impressive. Dr. Daniel also says that the Game Boy Advance will always be his favorite handheld, hands down, but sadly he can't really use it anymore because of its small size and the fact that his hands are so large. It hurts his hands after a short while of playing it, so he usually just plays Game Boy Advance games on his phone, consoles, or PC these days. And I actually had a similar experience not too long ago. I tried to go back to my Game Boy Advance, and I had the same problem where my hands were just way too big, and I couldn't really play it. It was not very comfortable, so I can't blame you for trying to play your Game Boy games in other ways. I think the GameCube was probably the best way to play it these days. Of course, you know, you have emulation, you have all that, on the PC, but on the GameCube it actually feels very natural because these are some console quality games that we got on the Game Boy Advance, and it actually plays really well on a TV screen and with a GameCube controller. A couple of you said the Nintendo DS was your first handheld, and a few others said that the Game Boy Color was theirs, but I didn't see a single comment from anybody saying that the original Game Boy was their first handheld. But that was actually mine, believe it or not. More specifically, it was the Game Boy Pocket, which was a redesign of the original Game Boy that instead of the green tint that the Game Boy is famous for, it actually just had a standard black and white display, which had a little bit less motion blur than the original Game Boy, and also took AAA batteries instead of AA. But it was essentially the original Game Boy, just a redesigned version of it, kind of like how the Game Boy Advance SP was a redesign of the original GBA. It's actually a really funny story about how I got into the Game Boy Pocket in the first place, and how that ended up being my first handheld instead of the Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance, because you guys know I didn't actually grow up with the original Game Boy in its prime, because that would be around late 80s, early to mid 90s. I wasn't born until 1998, which means that I grew up in the early to mid 2000s, long after the original Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket was still relevant. So it is kind of weird that someone my age got the original Game Boy or the Game Boy Pocket as their first handheld instead of a Game Boy Color or GBA. But the way it happened was that I was at my grandpa's house. I, I would always come over because, you know, my parents were busy, they were working, so they needed somebody to watch me. And my grandparents would always take care of me when my parents needed their help. So I'd be chilling with my grandpa and I noticed that he had a Game Boy and he was playing Tetris, and he showed me Tetris. He, he was obsessed with that game way back in the day. I think it was my mother or someone that got him the Game Boy Pocket for his birthday many, many years ago. And I'd always remember him playing Tetris on the Game Boy Pocket, and me as a little kid, I thought that was really cool that my 70-year-old grandpa was into video games. But one day, I come over to grandpa's house, and I noticed that he's not playing Tetris, and he's not playing with his Game Boy, which is something that he'd usually do, like, almost every time I'd come over. So I asked him, why aren't you playing Tetris? Why aren't you playing with the Game Boy? And he told me, like, meh, I'm kind of bored with it. I've been playing it so much. I'm kind of tired of it. And then he asked me, do you want to keep it? Do you want to take it home with you? Then I responded, like, yeah, of course I want to take it home with me. I think I was about six years old at that time. I never owned my own handheld system before. My sister had a Game Boy Color, but she never let me play it because she just didn't want to share it with me. So I didn't have much experience with handheld gaming at that point. I think at that point I already had my PS2, which was my first console, but I didn't have a lot of experience with handhelds. I didn't even know that the Game Boy was as old as it was back then, because we're talking me being six years old, this was around 2004. That means the Game Boy, the original Game Boy, was already like 15 years old at that point, because it came out in 1989. I didn't realize there was a Game Boy Advance. I knew there was a Game Boy Color, obviously, because my sister had one, and I knew that the one that my grandpa had was black and white. But I didn't really think about how old it was because someone was offering me something for free. Of course I'm going to take it. It's free. And I never owned my own handheld before, so it was really cool. There were five games that I had on the Game Boy Pocket, which all belonged to my grandfather, and he gave me all of his games. They were obviously Tetris, because that was his favorite game. There was Tennis, Malibu Beach Volleyball, Championship Pool, and my favorite game, 
Centipede. I never got to play Pokemon or Super Mario Land because my grandfather was not into those games, like those adventure style games. He really only cared about playing those simple arcade games, you know, the ones that are really easy to understand, like Centipede and Tetris and Volleyball. So those are really the only games I was able to play. But I remember loving the hell out of Centipede. I had so much fun with that game. I didn't really care much for the other ones. I actually really enjoyed Malibu Beach Volleyball. But Championship Pool, I remember the graphics were so bad that I couldn't even understand what was going on. And Tetris, I just wasn't a big fan of. I don't know why, but I, I really didn't care much for Tetris. And Tennis, I also didn't like very much. But yeah, it was Centipede, and I also played a little bit of Volleyball. The other games, I really didn't care for. So I really only played two games back then. At that point, the Game Boy was already discontinued, so you couldn't, like, go to the store and see new games that you can buy. I guess GameStop would have sold them back then, but I didn't go to GameStop when I was six years old. I went to, like, Toys R Us to buy video games, and Toys R Us didn't sell them, so I was stuck with those two games, pretty much. Volleyball and Centipede. Which was okay with me, because, like I said, it was a free gift. I never had a handheld system before, so it was a nice little cool thing that I had. If I really wanted to play video games, I would go on the PS2. But before I end the video, I actually want to tell a funny story to you guys. I think some of you guys might get a kick out of it. So this is about a few months after I got the Game Boy Pocket from my grandfather. This was the summertime. So every summer I would go to Mill Basin Day Camp in Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn. And as the name would tell you, it's a day camp. So it's not one of those go away camps where you're gone for like a few weeks and then you come back. It's like, no, like every afternoon your parents pick you up and you go home. I actually have a lot of really good memories with that place over the years. I started going when I was like four years old, and I think the last summer I went was in 2009 when I was 11, so I, I spent seven summers over there, eight summers actually, and I met a lot of cool kids over there, but there's actually a funny story where I was kind of bullied in summer camp. This was when I was six years old. I remember the first day of summer camp, all the kids had a Game Boy Advance with them. They were all playing with their GBA, of course like not the whole day because it was a day camp, and we had a lot of activities that we did. But, you know, when there was a little bit of downtime, like during a lunch break or something, everyone would have their Game Boy Advances out next to me on the table. And I remember as a six-year-old kid feeling very left out because everyone else was playing their Game Boys with each other, and I didn't have a Game Boy. But then I was thinking, wait a second, I do have a Game Boy. I have a Game Boy Pocket. If I bring that to camp tomorrow, I can fit in with all the other kids. So that's exactly what I do. The next day I show up to summer camp with my Game Boy Pocket, and all the kids are just looking at me funny, like, what do you have over there? What is that? I tell them, it's a Game Boy. And they just don't believe me. They're like, there's no way that's a Game Boy because what we have, that's a Game Boy. But then I show them and said, look, it says Game Boy Pocket. It literally says Game Boy on it. And they're all looking confused. Like, no, what you have is a fake Game Boy. What we have, that's a real Game Boy. And then they look at me playing Centipede and they see the gameplay and they're just laughing like, <laughs> oh my God, those graphics are terrible. You're playing in black and white. And then they accuse me of being poor, even though uh, your parents can't be poor to send you to a summer camp like that. It was like $3,000 a summer. And then I also had a sister. She also went to summer camp. So my parents were spending like 6 k a summer to send us to camp. Yeah, we weren't poor. I just didn't have a Game Boy Advance. But it didn't matter. All the other kids, they were convinced that I was poor. And they also thought I was weird for bringing that old Game Boy and not having the new one. But that was okay because the camp counselors actually thought I was really cool. Because they grew up with the Game Boy when they were my age back then. So I was six years old back then. They were like 16, 17. So that means that they grew up with the original Game Boy. Because they were 10 years older than I was. So they see me coming in with the OG Game Boy at summer camp. And they had mad respect. They thought I was the coolest kid in the group. So it wasn't a completely negative experience, but I was a little bit traumatized by all the kids making fun of me that I asked my mom for Christmas that year to get me a Game Boy Advance. So I didn't have a lot of experience with the Game Boy Pocket because I only had a few games and once I got the Game Boy Advance, even if I bought more Game Boy games, which I did, I got Pokemon Gold and Silver as I grew in to become a huge Pokemon fan. Uh, this was before the Gen 2 remakes came out on Nintendo DS, so back then Gold and Silver was the only way to experience Johto. So I bought those games, but I didn't play them on the Game Boy Pocket. I used them for my Game Boy Advance because, as Dr. Daniel pointed out, the Game Boy Advance was backwards compatible with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. So I had really no purpose of using the Game Boy Pocket anymore. It's pretty much been collecting dust since 2005, even though I still have it. It still works as far as I know. I just haven't had a reason to boot it up because the Game Boy Advance was backwards compatible. But that's the story of my very first handheld, the Game Boy Pocket. Hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Until next time.